Now this lesson is very important because when you work in a company, you have lots of departments, you have lots of divisions, and the problem that you're facing every day is that these departments, these divisions, these teams, these individuals are working in something what we call silos. And these silos are very separate, very departmentalized, which is making it very difficult for individuals and teams to cross collaborate. And because of this reason, um, you're, we're facing delays, we're facing massive uh, shortages in terms of capacity. We're also facing um, uh, difficulties when it comes to communication. There's a lot of problems that comes by working in silos. And I think probably the worst thing that I've encountered in all my years is that knowledge is hard to access. And the knowledge becomes so specialized within one department, we fail to establish cross-cutting skills, uh, T-shaped, E-shaped individuals, it, which is something that we're gonna get into a little bit later on. But most importantly, that how can we break this barrier? So uh, the question that you need to ask yourselves right now is how can we break the barrier between all these departments? You have a project, that project's been handed to you and you're struggling to make that project work across all these departments. What can you do right now? Scaled Agile actually has one solution to this. And this is something that you might have heard before, which is called the Agile Release Train. The Agile Release Train is a very simple, fundamental mechanism that helps establish alignment, cadence, a rhythm across all these departments and all the individuals that should be working together. Now, how does this work? Let's say you are given a project by a stakeholder, by a CIO, CTO, CFO, whoever that may be. And your job is to make this work, work flawlessly, without any delays, without any uh, problems and communications, and deliver the project on time. What SAFE recommends here is that you take the individuals that are involved from marketing, you take the individuals that are involved from legal, procurement, IT, design, from all the departments that are stakeholders, key, key players that are involved on this project, you bring them and you put them in one virtual network. This virtual network is called the Agile Release Train. Now this could be up to 25 individuals or up to 125 individuals or 150 individuals even. The important thing to understand here is that this set of people are going to be working together collaboratively to make sure this project is delivered on time. So you're sitting there and wondering, is that even possible? Can we get all these people to function correctly? Yes, we can. And the Agile Release Train runs on a cadence, a rhythm, which is actually set by something called PI planning, Program Increment Planning. It's a workshop that happens every, uh, I think it's about eight to 12 weeks, and everyone jumps on this workshop and they plan together. They analyze risks. They, they, they figure out how to coordinate all the different uh, tasks. They figure out where the dependencies are. They figure out what scope uh, decisions need to be made. It's a phenomenal workshop. This could be done physically, it could be done virtually, but the important things is that this Agile Release Train functions on this cadence. And that's how powerful this thing is. And I have been on many PI plannings and many Agile release trains over the last 15 years. And one thing that I know for certainty is that if you have a failing project, if you have a project which is not delivering predictably, your stakeholders are looking at you without no confidence, you really want to take this very seriously. This is the one mechanism that will help you release value quickly, efficiently, and effectively. Now, we spoke about the Agile Release Train, which is a combination of all these stakeholders working together to drive value within, within your project. But we've also spoken about the PI planning is this workshop. It's actually a two-day workshop that runs every eight to four weeks. Well, eight to 12 weeks, sorry, which helps you keep the, uh, keeps the train on the track. But is there anything else that we need to know on this? One thing I would like to add here is that there's also something called an, an inspect and adapt workshop. This is happening also within this eight to 12 weeks, which is happening towards the end. So the PI planning happens at the first, and then you have the program increment planning, which happens right at the end. 
What is going on in between there? Execution. People are working. People are delivering what they can deliver. They're getting the work done. And then at the inspect and adapt workshop, they're checking how well they have delivered. How, where can they, where are their weaknesses? And what do they need to do to turn their weaknesses into strengths? This is what's happening in the workshop. And in fact, stakeholders come. Stakeholders attend this workshop. They also give their feedback. In fact, the teams demonstrate what they have created throughout the eight to 12 weeks of execution and they get the feedback from the stakeholders. And it's not just there. This feedback is happening all the way throughout the PI, the program increment, eight to 12 weeks of execution. Now think about it. If you had this perfect mechanism working within your project, and if you could deliver predictably, how would the stakeholders react to you? How much trust would you develop? They'd think you're the man, right? They'd be thinking, like, this guy's got it under control. He's our A-list project manager. And most importantly, they start to put you in a position for promotion, uh, pay rises, more authority, more responsibility. You become the man of credibility and you become the person, the go-to person within the company that has the skills, the capabilities to get things done. This is why this Agile release train is so powerful.